Today, I'll be installing the C-Choice LED all-around pole light on my neighbor's boat. Um, it's been corroded uh, and it needs replacement. Uh, so we'll go through a little bit of diagnostics uh, and then also go through how to install this. All right, I wanna quickly go over what tools we'll be using today. The first one is a set of wire strippers and cutters. The second one will be a drill or standard screwdriver uh, will work. Uh, whatever you have is fine. I recommend using a drill. It's a little bit easier on, on your hands. Some butt connectors. For this connection, I'll need step-down butt connectors. Uh, my, the gauge wire running back to the light is a little bit bigger than what's on the light, so we'll be using these step-downs. Very easy to use, uh, great to have uh, for your boat. Next will be three screws. Uh, the current, the screws that were in the boat before were, were bad. I uh, need to replace them, so I'll be putting three screws in. If you have some that are not rusted, uh, you know, that's fine too. Some marine grade silicone or caulk. And optionally, I'll go through how I install um, these. For every electrical connection on the boat, I always put on heat shrink tubing, so I'll be putting heat shrink tubing on this as well. Um, and then a, a small drill bit, smaller than your screw, and painter's tape. We'll go over how this is gonna come into play, um, but this actually helps protect your gel coat when you're, when you're putting new screw holes in. Before you start anything electrical on a boat, you wanna make sure that your battery switch is in the off position. If you don't have a battery switch, that your negative is disconnected. Um, also, if you do have a battery switch and you wanna be extra safe, you can always disconnect the negative. That is always the safest option. Um, so right now I have completed that step, uh, made sure there's no electricity going to, to this right now. Immediately upon opening this connection here, you know, there's a, you, it's probably hard to see, but there's a lot of corrosion in here. As I pulled further, someone did not do their due diligence in wiring this. So you can see that there is a lot of corrosion on this connection here. I would venture to guess that there is an equal amount on here just based on the fact that this isn't even really fully covered. It's just a little bit of electrical tape. So when you get to this point, when you start to see, you know, green and black, there's a high likelihood that that's not conducting any electricity through that connection at all. Um, so this can cause uh, your, your electrical devices not to work at all. Um, I would venture to guess that there is corrosion probably through this entire uh, wire at this point. So the, the entire thing is, is, uh, needs to be replaced at this point. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, with something like this, you know, you make sure you give yourself, we have plenty of wire here, as you can see. Um, I don't have to work with any wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip you know, a good several inches down from the connection. And here's what I'm looking for. Um, this wire is pretty thin, so it's hard to see. Um, but, but as you look down at the end of the wire, what you wanna make sure you don't see um, is any black pieces on there. And as we strip, we'll kind of look for that same problem. Okay, right now we look pretty good in, in kind of goldish color here. Um, so we're gonna keep moving on. Okay, now I'm just stripping off a little bit. All right, so here we go, now I've seen it. All right, so as you can see here, we've got a pretty decent amount of corrosion. It's pretty black. I see a little bit of blue in here. This black on its own isn't terrible. Um, depending on the wire, sometimes you'll see that, but I do see a little bit of blue corrosion in there. So I'm gonna go down just a little bit further and we'll see if we get any better luck. And again, we're just going maybe a half inch to it, half inch up, strip it out. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. A little bit of black on there, but that may be from the outside wire. I don't see any blue. Um, we're looking okay. Uh, this is likely a pretty damaged wire from the previous way they wired this, but I can see gold in the middle there. Um, I don't see any blue on there anymore, which is great. I'm just gonna twist this up and now it's ready for its next connection. This one actually looks pretty good. So the next step will be to connect our butt connectors. Okay, so these this is the bigger wire. So I'm gonna slide this in. Um, make sure we're twisted nice and good here. Nice little tug check. And then the same thing on this one. Crimp it off. Tug check number two. Okay, we got good connection. All right, we're, so we're set up initially here. Now we've got our C-Choice base here. 
as you can see, pre-stripped and uh, soldered at the end. And if you ever have a question about what size gauge you need, um, I want a quick note here um, on this video. Um, the side of all the wires will have what gauge wire it is, so I'll tell you what size connectors you need. So each of these somewhere written on here will be what gauge wire you're running um, in case you ever have a question. Tug check. Okay, so we've got two well-seated wires in here, positive to positive, negative to negative. So we just completed putting these, uh, the butt connectors and the heat shrink tubing. So I've got good wire. So now I'm gonna do is take my heat gun and I'm gonna shrink the tubing around the wire. All right, so what we're looking for here is you wanna make sure you have pretty even coverage. As you can see, this looks fairly uniform across the wire. You'll see a little bit of the adhesive come out of the back. Uh, there's a little nudge around the whole wire. That means we've got a, a good seal. Um, there's no water that's gonna enter from either side of this. Uh, so these are watertight seals. And then we'll put this secondary on here. We'll slide this right over the top. And again, this is just a secondary form of protection. That's all it's gonna do is kind of protect the butt connector as well. This one's complete. We'll move on to the next one. All right, so now that we have our electrical uh, done, now I'm gonna go ahead and install this into the hole. This is more of a test shot. So as I can see here, this hole lines up with the previous model that was in here. Um, these two, unfortunately for this time, do not. We're gonna have to drill two new holes, which is okay, that's, that's a pretty simple, easy step. One of the things that you, know, you wanna always make sure you do is protect your gel coat. Uh, something that I like to do that's always worked for me uh, just a little bit of painter's tape um, over where your holes are going to go. So we'll just put this down here. Put this back to where it's going to go. Nice snug fit. We're aligned in the front. Okay, so I'm going to pre-drill my holes in here through the painter's tape to make sure that the, that everything kind of stays together um, and that will set the screw uh, for the screw to go in later. Before I do that, I'm going to take this screw and put it in the back just to make sure I'm still centered. Okay, so I know that that screw is going to go in. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't end up drilling holes where I can't put this all the way in. No cracking, you know, we don't need to go fast. Slow and steady wins the race here on this. Uh, you really wanna make sure that, you know, you get this right. Um, again, that painter's tape just kinda helps, in my mind, hold everything together. Um, these two pilot holes will help those, make sure those screws don't crack the gel coat when we put them in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is fill in uh, all of the gap spaces from the previous install. And then I'm gonna put a little bit around the base of, of this connection here to make sure that when I put it in the hole, that, that this circular area here is also completely sealed. So we wanna make sure that this is sealed to water and then I have two other holes here that I need to fill up. So I'm gonna do that next. Now this is gonna ensure that, again, I have a nice seal there that we're not gonna get any water down along the wire line. Now it's time to just screw it in. One last feature here of, of the base. Uh, this has a closable cover. Whenever you're not using the light, you need to make sure that this is fully closed. Uh, this keeps water from getting into your port and causing uh, corrosive issues like we had before. Um, and to keep your, your product lasting for a very, very, very long time. So now that we've completed our install of the base, now we gotta do is put in the light and test it.
And as you can see, it works great. Uh, this will last, as an LED will last years and years and years. Um, so this should be a great new feature for this boat.